What's up, what's up, what's up? This is uh this is kind of a jacked up one for me today. Um, this is bathroom preaching. This is gonna be calling good evil and calling evil good. I'm gonna read a few scriptures real quick and then there's a little topic I wanna to talk about real quick. So I'm gonna start off uh, doing something a little out of the ordinary for me. I'm gonna read one verse out of Isaiah, which is basically the the verse that this is all, all centered around. Everything else is going to kind of parallel that and bring it into, bring it into fullness. So in Isaiah, the fifth chapter, 20th verse, Isaiah says, Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Let's so read that one again. Woe unto them that call evil good and call good evil, that put darkness for light and put light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and put sweet for bitter. Everything's twisted, twisted. Everything is twisted. Let's go to the book of Romans. Book of Romans 1.16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone, to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So now we're going to get into this word here. This is a little hard for me. A little hard here. It says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image, into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to the uncleanliness. He gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was meet the recompense of their error, the penalty of their error, which was due. It says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do things which are not convenient. And if you want to break down not convenient, it would be saying things that are not fitting. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, Wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. This might sound like a bad bunch of scriptures to read today. There's a reason I'm reading these out the word of God today. There's a reason I'm reading these. I read an article just a few minutes ago. I didn't even read all the article. I only read the first paragraph, not even a paragraph, probably the first six sentences. And it's about a movie called Fifty Shades of Grey. It's just a movie. It's just a movie. And it just so happens that the star's name in the movie happens to be Christian. Isn't that funny? But it says in this article in the Detroit News Today, Audiences 
were more than curious to check out the big screen adaption of the racy phenomenon Fifty Shades of Grey this weekend. The erotic, R-rated drama sizzled in its debut, earning an estimated $81.7 million in its first three days. Distributor Universal Pictures said on Sunday, in addition to destroying Valentine's Day and President's Day weekend records, Fifty Shades of Grey has also become the second highest February debut ever. The second highest February debut ever at $81.7 million. Behind, just behind, Passion of the Christ at $83.9 million, opening in 2004. 2004. Here is the part of this story that just jacked me up. According to Universal, North American audiences were 68% female. 68% female. Is that really what women want? Is that really what they want? Is that really how we are? We, we call evil good and good evil. When it says, for this cause a man shall leave his mother and father and shall be joined to his wife and the two shall become one. A man is supposed to protect his wife. Not beat her into submission, not dominate her, not demoralize her. And 68% of women, 68% was the audience. Wow. That's really what we've come to. It saddens me. It saddens my heart for that. Because women, you're better than that. 